famous international publisher Marcus Garvey said, A reading man and woman is a ready man and woman, but a writing man and woman is exact. Yeah. Think about it. And while you do remember, I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Books and Beer, our weekly foray into all things indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty, and our topic today is publishing through serial fiction. Claudia Hall Christian is with us from the Denver Serial, and she's going to tell us about serializing her work as an author. Claudia, welcome to the show. So now, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you are drinking. Uh, I'm still Claudia Hall Christian, as I have always been. Um, I am an author and a beekeeper. I live in Denver, and I'm drinking homemade mead. Made with your own honey from your little honeybee empire? Yes. We made this nice. uh, mead with some friends um, in our honeybee empire. When we had, when, when we were able to keep the bees alive long enough to have uh, honey. Yeah, it's a couple years ago. I suppose that ago. does help. So yes. <laughs> never, quite gotten to me never quite gotten to meat in my home brewing, but tried a, a bunch of different things. So Well, we've uh, talked tonight, about it. If we, get, if we get honey, I'll send you some this year, and you can try it. Okay. I'm also fascinated to know what honey does in the mail. I picture my postman being very pissed at me after that. But okay. No, no, it's fine. They don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, nothing as exciting as me, but I was excited to find a Longanitas brown sugar in the back of our fridge. Uh, a very, very nice beer given to me by my brother-in-law who tried one out of a six-pack and said, this is disgusting. And I said, you're an idiot. <laughs> took the rest. Oh, so, you want to yeah. go to the other, the other four, man. You know where to find me. Um, yes. I'm taking it easy tonight because I've either got allergies or a cold, so a session black from Full sale for me. Actually, I have another one here in the event that one doesn't quite cut it. That's a succession <laughs> beer. And I thought it was aptly fitting. I wonder if anyone out there can figure out the tie-in to the show. Hmm. No, I guess nobody can. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah, I, I promise you we're on. <laughs> Life with Evo. I wonder if anyone can figure out what vowel I'm thinking of. <laughs> a. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> a, yeah, exactly right, actually. Anyway, moving on. So, the Denver Serial. What yes. is it, and how long have you been doing this? Uh, the Denver Serial is a traditional serial fiction, which I think that most people can relate it to kind of a soap opera. It's a little bit of, um, it's, it's super fun. It's about people who... Um, live in Denver and they many of them live in a very large house uh, they call the castle and it has you know some mystery and some romance and some hard times and um, a little bit of kind of everything well, getting tactical though you yes. publish what six days a week we publish um, I publish on a website about 500 words um, every day of the week, six days of the week. So it's a chapter a week, um, every week for the last four and a half years, almost five years. Be five years in June, June twelfth. So it's constant. No, no breaks. No. Nope. Vacations. No. Nope. I tried to take a vacation the third year, and people really freaked out. So I figured that that was probably not. <laughs> I mean, really, like, you can't do this to me. Um, these are my friends. I, I don't know what I'll do. So I figured that, you know, whatever. It's it's about 3,000 words a week. Um, and, again, it's just about people. Um, but you're, I don't doing know if you more, could... you're doing more than just making a blog post um, six days a week. What I know there's a process by which these actually wind up getting published, as in available in an ebook form. You want to talk about that for a moment? 
Uh, sure. So it's a chapter a week. Um, I, I write them, they are edited, and they're posted at denverserial.com um, every day of the week. They're also posted in chapter form at storiesbyclaudia.com. And then when we get about between 26 and 30 chapters, basically a story arc or a small story arc together, they become books. And there are now seven of those books um, that that we publish and they do really well in ebooks. They also do well in paperback. Um, the Denver Serial has a pretty hardcore following. Um, we get about 10,000 people a day that read every day. We get people who read every week at storiesbyclaudia.com. And then we have people who only read the books and they read them in, again, ebook and paperback and everything in between. Um, it's, it's pretty fun. And, you know, again, the stories are real life. We just wrapped up. Uh, um, you know, a, a salt ring in the high school, you know, of some boys that were assaulting girls in high school. And, um, you know, we deal with real life issues and, um, you know. So if you're dealing with real life issues, I mean, that obviously tells me that you have, this is not a planned story arc that is five years, six years, whatever long. This is more off the cuff than that. But is it completely off the cuff? I mean, are, are you at least writing in some sort of contiguous block or is every day, uh, this is what I'm going to write about today? No, I mean, the chapters, the chapters follow story arcs. Usually there are two or three story arcs going on at, at one time. Um, we also have, you know, some people are pregnant. We have a woman who's pregnant with twins. She happens to have a, a healing capacity. Um, you guys, I'm sure that you know this, but there was a person um, in a random test in Africa, in Kenya, that, that they found who had the capacity, whose blood had the capacity to heal. He's um, called Patient 35. And his, his blood just had the capacity to heal. They don't have a name on this person and they don't know who he is or where he is or where he came from. He just showed up in a blood sample. And so she is, she is very similar to that. She has the capacity to heal. She's now pregnant with twins. Um, there's a medical establishment that's trying trying to get her blood just like people are trying to find this guy patient 35 um, so you know it's so so that's going on underneath the story the smaller story arcs of what's happened with these kids um, prior so, to this we we had a um, one of the main characters um, husband came back he happens to be a hip-hop rock star and you know has to redo his life over again Okay, I'm getting overwhelmed just listening to the, 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 the <laughs> summary here. So yeah. you have an overarching, you, you've got your arc. You know where things are kind of right. wrapping up, right? They're headed. Right. How far in advance do you write? Are you writing for next uh, week? It depends. For... It depends. I just um, published the fifth in a thriller series, the Alex of Faith thriller series. And um, so right now Denver Serial is going basically week to week. The chapters are written and they're edited on Sundays and they're published on Monday week to week to week um, and then sometimes I write out the farthest I've ever gotten is about six weeks in advance that's really common for people who write traditional serial fiction who actually write serial fiction versus serializing a novel those are kinda of two different things okay so why, why did you personally choose the serialized approach versus um, you know writing the full book and putting out as one big thing or serializing at that point? What was the appeal? Um, I wanted, uh, you know, the odd thing is that I'm capable of doing it. I think that that's some of it. It takes a real, um, it takes a real capacity and I was just capable of doing it. It interested me. I wanted to see, see where it would go. When I started, it was really just three chapters of a short story. I didn't really have any idea that I'd be sitting here five years later talking about seven books, almost eight books, um, you know, 10,000 people and growing. Um, we do really well in book sales. You know, I really just didn't have any idea. It just all came together, and I was very lucky. You know, I have good characters and interesting stories, and, you know, I don't know. It just so it's happened. Not where you, it's not where you first saw yourself, but it's where you naturally fit today. Will you continue, or do you think at some point in time you're going to end this up and just go to write a regular novel like most normal humans? 
Well, I do write regular novels. I, I, I do. I write the thriller series, and then I also have a mystery series. Um, so I do that, too. Um, I, last year, I had a contract to write a serial fiction in Fort Worth, Texas. And so that came out. It was 26 chapters called The Queen of Cool. Um, I did it for another website. I think it's likely that I'll do another serial um for another website. I can't handle more than two storylines at a time. Now Dickens, who's a hero of mine, um, could manage three storylines at a time. He could write three serial fictions, have keep three serial fictions, and he wrote like I did. Um, he wrote as it was published. He didn't write ahead. Um, the most he was ahead was six weeks. When he died, he was six weeks ahead. Um, and so in the serials that he had been working on. Um, I can only manage two storylines at any given time. And so... so you, you, you do a double Dickens and that's it. I do a double Dickens, yeah. That's okay. it. I can only manage two. So if I'm working on a, on a, a Fay book, I can keep Denver Serial going. If I start another serial, then I can keep Denver Serial going. But I can't write a serial, a mystery, and a um, Denver Serial. Okay, I'm going to ask you questions about your writing habits in the okay. um, after show here, but right, right now I want to know, so you have the, the sections, the mini bits, and people read those every day, then yes. you've got the chapters, then you've got the books. Uh, in as much detail as you're willing to share, where does the money come in? I mean, are you are you getting ads and revenue at all levels? Is it really the books still where the, the, the flow is and the rest build readership? We don't take ads. Um, my my friend Naomi Dumford always says to me that any time I decide to take an ad, that she um, that I should call her and she will give me money. Um, so um, we don't take ads, um, and we sell books, and mostly we sell books. You know, because the truth of the matter is, is that people like to own things, and even if they read it on the internet. They still want to own a book. They want to own an ebook. If they own an ebook, they want to own a paperback. I mean, we know now that that communism doesn't work, and the reason that communism doesn't work is that people like to own things. And so, if if, uh, if owning things is enough to bring down an entire economic system, it certainly is enough to support me, which it has. Which we're doing. You know, we're doing well. We sell books. No. Yeah. Self selling books is a good thing because money in the yeah. pocket, they can do things they want to do. Okay, so final question. We'll wrap things up here. Um, this sounds great. It's definitely working for you, but I don't know that it would work for everyone, obviously. But, you know, for the one author or two authors or 20 authors out there listening to say, you know, I want to try this, what are some tips? What are some pitfalls? What are some quick things you should tell them that they should either do or perhaps even not do? I think that they should certainly just go for it. I mean, the truth of the matter is what um, Tim O'Reilly said. Obscurity is our biggest problem at, for authors. You know, people won't know what you're capable of until they're capable until they read it and the truth is that sampling works I mean go to Costco on a Saturday and see the lines of people who are trying sampling food writing is like food writing books is like preparing a meal and and give people a chance to try it and um, and I don't know that there are pitfalls everybody has their own pitfalls some people can write like I do where they start some start a story and there's no end in sight some people really need to to write whole books and that was true in Dickens this time too um, you know traditional serial fiction people start at, at one point and they just write and they end up up when they end up um, when I did the had just the year-long contract um, I had to organize that a little differently but you know you're enough people are gonna come up with whatever works for them and and I think that's cool I yeah. publish a chapter every week um, I don't think that's mandatory. Dickens published a chapter every month. Some people publish a chapter every quarter. Do what works for you. That's I what I would say. There's plenty of room out there on the Internet for lots of things to be yes. tried in this world that we live. So awesome. Well, thank you very much for being on the program with us today. Thanks for having me. Okay, kids, that'll do it for the show. Hang out for a bit. We've got the after show coming for those of you watching live. If not, eh, sorry. Bye.
Have you bought your copy, by the way? Have you bought your copy of Writing Awesome Sales Copy, a mm -hmm. modern indie author's guide? It's our very first one. Check it out. Go to the website. You can find links to it over there. While you're there, you can find show notes uh, and links to Claudia's work and the books and the thousands of things she does on a daily basis. All of that at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of e Publish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital age. For more information, education, classes, and lots of stuff, check out epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for enjoying the show. Bye.